Hello everyone, this is Julie from August Birdsong, and I'm just coming to you today with um, some examples of what to do when uh, you've made a mess of something else. What I'm talking about is I was printing off some copies the other day, and my printer was very troublesome. And this is the kind of thing I was getting. And I changed the ink and, you know, ran through more copies, getting variations of that bad print job. And I was so disgusted. So here's another one, not quite as green, but still not usable. Um, I was so disgusted with dealing with the printer and wasting the paper that I finally just stopped trying and I came upstairs with those um, bad Xeroxes, those bad copies, and um, was like, well, I'm going to go ahead and just make something with it. Um, you know, when you're frustrated, it's kind of nice to sit down and tear some paper and slap some glue on something. So I took something like this, and, and by the way, these are this is a terrible picture of it, but these are the newest mini um, art uh, collages available through Mrs. Cog. And um, I was real excited to get the digital kit. And of course, my my printer decided to, to act up. So what I ended up doing is taking those those bad copies and instead of just wasting the paper or throwing it out or something, um, I've been seeing a lot of people have been posting on Instagram about um, uh, collage rolls. So it gave me an idea, okay, well, maybe I'll make a collage roll. So I basically just, you know, put the paper, folded it into fourths, and then just tore down the, the different sections. So I had the strips of them. And if you look at... Uh, for example, this here, you can see, see how this was a bad copy. I was trying to print some quotes here and, and it just, it was a disaster. But that's the back of the bad, the bad uh, print page. And I just started to layer them up with, you know, paper scraps that I had around here. Plus my ever present uh, torn edges of books and stuff. And so, you know, whatever scraps you have in your bins, I just started with my um, my glue stick and just started putting them down. What I could have done in, in hindsight, I could have collaged the whole page, whether I did it on this side or this side. I could have done the whole page in collage and then cut it down. And that might be easier uh, an easier way to do it. I've done it that way before too, but in this case, I just happened to to size them down pretty quick. So I had the long strips and uh, went ahead and, and did my base with everything. Then I put some uh, matte medium, the uh, Liquitex. This is the matte medium uh, here. And what I always do is, I'm not going to open it right now, but I pour some drops. I just drip some drops on it. And then I use a credit card, you know, an old uh, gift card. And I just take it over it to get the matte medium smoothed on thin so it gets those little edges between different papers. And then uh, I went back and I added some washi tape here and there. Uh, I have washi tape stamps, um, and those are from the Milk Fairy shop, I think it is, on Etsy. And um, then I also just used, I've got just a little bin over here with, you know, scraps of sari silk and, and muslin and stuff. And I just pulled different colors and auditioned them with these and added some in. So at that point, I hadn't stitched anything or inked anything at all. And then <clears throat> I went ahead and started auditioning different, um, you know, little focal point subjects like the little birds. 
And so once I had done that and kind of kind of gotten things where I was happier about it, here I kind of wanted him perched on this. So once I got things essentially where I was fairly happy, he was something like that, um, and glued him down, then I went ahead and actually I added the book pages, no surprise, and then stitched it. So I'm still working on those ones I was, like this one I was just holding, that still needs to be um, worked on. But here are some that um, I, I took to the furthest step with making them. And so you could, the, what I ended up with was not a collage roll, but more of collaged snippets. And <clears throat> I just looked for sections of those strips that I had made, which were essentially, you know, the length of the page. And in some cases, uh, I cut them in half or even cut them down further. And so here are just some for you to see. Um, I added the other day, if you watched my video, I had made some of these sort of little decorative um, snippets again from leftover tags and stuff from other projects. And some of them I hadn't put anything on the back, so it was just raw on the back. And those are the ones I used. So I added those pre-made tags of mine, the ones that looked very similar to this, and I added them to the basic collage here. And then I went in and added some more things like the, the sari silk, um, just some other ephemera I had here. This was from a paper pack uh, by one of the, it wasn't Stamperia. Um, I can't think at the moment, authentic, not authentic. I'm not sure. I'll have to check on that. But it had um, all these little lines in it on these little colored strips. So I added that. I had from making this little tag, I had a quote, some, you know, stamping. Here's some washi tape. Here's some torn and uh, distressed book page. And I just glued the the scrap from the bad Xerox, the bad print, onto the book page and then messed with the edges and distressed it. And so here it is ready to be used somewhere. It could be in my medieval um, garden collage book. It could just be in a, in a journal. It could be on a card. Um, I could glue this onto a, a bigger canvas for some dimension, but it's just ready to go. And so that's, you know, where I went with those bad Xeroxes. I keep saying Xeroxes and they're not Xeroxes. They're bad prints because my Canon 1200 printer has, it has moods and it'll either be jamming the paper or once I, I get past that, uh, it'll print well for a while and then all of a sudden uh, the inks and the, the printing and stuff, I have to fight with that with it. So it, it can be very frustrating at times. And, um, but, you know, a good thing, uh, if you, you're given lemons, make lemonade, that saying, the good thing is, is it wasn't totally wasted, all that messing with the, the ink and stuff. And I created something I can, can enjoy at least out of it. So here's another one, and I had cut this one down. Again, it's just on the back of a book page, has a little bit of ribbon here. Uh, and you can see these are some of those stamps from Red Lead Paperworks that I used. I, it was a collage sheet that I cut up and distressed. And I used those on these little tags. And then I, I had their whole bunch on the sheet. I had these left over. So I'm still using those on, on some of these little tags. Um, and again, here we have that washi tape uh, with the, with the uh, fine art stickers. Um, so there is that one. And then, let's see here. This one I cut in half, uh, the top part of it. And again, worked small. 
put it on a book, Hardy's Boys book page. This is the word river. Um, I added one of those pre-made little snippet tags, added some muslin here and a little sari silk in those two places. Uh, and the sari silk came from on Etsy. I would need to check the seller's name, but it's, it's remnants of, it's not cut up saris, but it's remnants um, from saris that are made. And they just come in a big string of, of color. And so here you can see, as you go through, well, I'd cut that one apart. But they, they're all stitched together and kind of go into each other. And so what I do is I just, you know, pull out different bits as I'm looking for different colors. And, you know, and just add them that way because that works great. You could use them... Um, you know, uh, to like wrap around a journal to secure it. You could, I've used it as a hanger at the top of one of my larger collages. Uh, but the sari silk works great. And if you like that sort of messy grunge sort of look, um, it fits really well with that too. So there is that one. Here is this one. And again, this part right here in the center was that pre-made tag. This was an Artie Mays tag from her tag digital kit. These were actually those leftover tabs that you get um, with a lot of the journal making um, uh, kits. And again, that was Artie Mays. And then the rest was just the scrap paper, the stickers, the old book page, and some sorry silk and the stamps from uh, Red Lead Paperworks. And so again, see, there you can see the bad Xerox is right there. And in this case, I just added a strip, like that little bin I have of these little strips. I just added it and I just glued it like there on it and then inked the edges. And then it was sewn in later. Uh, and I did a little extra layering. So there's that. But again, very tactile. Um, I like my art to not only be pretty to look at and interesting to look at, but very touchable. That it draws out that sense of touch, which triggers your thoughts of other things, you know, that are soft or coarse or whatever, whatever you're trying to bring out. Now, this one I messed up as well when I was stitching it. And uh, in, in the original video where I showed where I had made these little tags, there's another birdie right down here. And notice I've put the green over him because I ended up stitching right through his head. And I didn't like how that looked. And this was part of a bigger a bigger piece. This was going to be kind of a full length, um, you know, uh, snippet. And so it would originally, you can see how it lines up right there. And I had come stitching down and I had stitched that intentionally because I did want to keep it on there better, but I was working quick and not looking as closely at, at the details I was stitching through. And so I thought at first, okay, I can live with it. You know, I've stitched through the bird. It's okay. But that kind of thing finally will, you know, bug me. And then I won't use it for anything. I'll decide, well, I don't really want to use it because I don't think it's, you know, it's as nice as I wanted it. So I ended up deciding I'm going to cut them in half because <clears throat> generally the bottom was okay. I had done some real wonky stitching, just, you know, just, uh, on the sewing machine, all I do is as it's going through, I just jiggle it. And so, and then for something like this, I just turn the tag on the sewing machine around as it's stitching and just, you know, just play with it. Um, and, you know, and just do it carefully, slowly so that it, it doesn't get it all messed up. But I still had this piece that I was really happy with. And this was like the little squirrel's tail. Uh, and so by cutting it in half, I ended up, you know, knowing, okay, I'm happy with both of these pieces now. 
So when I cut it, I went ahead and put it back through and stitched that across and pretty much left that alone. Uh, and with this one, because of the bird had the stitching through it, I put some more of that green, it's sort of like a polyester almost, um, sari silk on it and just stitched across to cover the bird. And so if I hadn't told you in the video and you didn't remember when I had shown this to you before, you wouldn't even know that the bird had been there. So I guess my point with this video is just even when you make you know something that's not working well or in this case it started with you know uh, the bad print job you know before just giving up or throwing everything in the trash um, see what what can I do with it how can I turn this trash into I don't know if it's a treasure but at least something that you know I can feel like well it was productive it wasn't a total loss and, um, you know, whether it's a big page of collage or little snippets or cutting something in half because it'll look better in the long run or you'll, you'll want to use it more, don't be afraid to kind of take those um, risks because, again, at the end of the day, I could always throw something in the trash can if I really don't like it. But at least I've tried to turn it into something else. And sometimes it's through those mistakes that we end up, you know, coming out with artwork or crafts, things that we've made that actually sometimes are my favorites. Sometimes the, the mistakes that I had to somehow try to cover up end up being more original and interesting than, uh, you know, different pieces where maybe I, I planned it a lot and knew exactly how I wanted it to look. So be adventurous. Um, if you have a frustrating day, some days the mojo just isn't working and, and nothing looks good to you, don't be afraid to, to step away from it um, or put it in a bin where you'll use it for something else. And sometimes just coming back to something, it, it ends up not looking as bad as you thought it was going to be. Uh, and, you know, fresh eyes can give you new perspective on things. So stepping away can be a good thing. Uh, with this one then, um, same thing, just the old book page here. You can see that was the, the nozzle print check part of the printer thing. And um, again, you know, I'll find a, a time to use those or a place or they'll sit until I am ready um, to do something with them. So to finish this uh, little video out, I'll just start gluing down, I think, some of the um, ones I'm still working on. And what I, what I like to do with them before, if possible, it, it's not crucial, but I kind of like to just, and I've said this before, just do a little ink. This is a vintage photo going around the edge of uh, the little focal point, whatever it'll, whatever you plan on it to be. And it just kind of, again, takes away that look of just cut paper. You know, those harsh lines. It helps it sort of blend a little. And then you can even, um, you know, do some blending. I liked this little bird. He's uh, He is from a set, uh, a collage set of little birds, I think it is, on Red Lead, from Red Lead um, Paperworks. And uh, he's one of my favorites. And I think, I'd like you to see the word, but I don't know that it has to be totally, totally placed real obvious. So I might even do something like that, sort of just tuck him under there. So now I'm going to do my little adventure sticker here or piece of paper. Oh, now I need to remember where I had it. Well, it was roughly about there. I'm not going to worry about it. And then the little birdie. And I choose the, the ribbons or other embellishments um, 
just sort of based off of the colors in the background papers. Uh, so, you know, this one had the blue, but this little Cezanne, um, Cezanne um, art sticker, it's from uh, Washi Tape, that's all by Cezanne, it had those oranges and that hint of blue in there, and there's some blue here and there. So I thought that all works together. Uh, this is some Tim Holtz washi tape, and I just kind of tore at it. I brought that in because the brown is sort of that neutral color. Um, this has a lot of color in general already, and so I just wanted to kind of cover up some of the collage lines, but not with more strong color. And so when you're trying to sort of tone it down, um, so that the you know the main focal point areas are the burst of color find like a neutral colored washi tape so you know a brown or sort of gray or some black um, if you look at this one i had the black polka dots on that let me see here if any other ones stand out with the washi um, there's a little bit of Tim Holtz right along there, but um, by tearing the washi, it also helps to kind of merge it with the other collaged pieces. So this one is basically ready for the sewing machine. Uh, sometimes I wait to ink it until after because otherwise it sort of gets ink on the sewing machine as you drag it through, um, but you can wash that off too. Um, but so what I'll end up doing with this is just stitching around it. I didn't put a book page on this. I guess I could do that. So it doesn't have to be real big. I could put it on this part. Um, I could, now this one has that paper on it. I could just glue it down for a sturdier base on. Like here's this Hardy Boys book and it says a hazardous takeoff. I could have it that if I want to play with words again. But I've got Adventure, Coney Island, and Something Highway. So maybe, maybe this would be a good page. So I'm going to go ahead and just take that off. And I'm going to just glue this down at this point. right there under that okay. and then you could use I have this tear tool and so maybe that's what I should use I could use this one with this edge or the other edge but I'm gonna I'll try that turn it upside down and bring it a little bit closer. Um, I may, with, because this is such a thin little area, I'm just going to do that part by hand. And I think that top one up there, I'm just going to press hard on the left and slowly pull it towards you. And at least you get a torn edge um, with that. And I kind of want to take away that corner area there and then so it says a hazardous takeoff ink this up and again I have not stitched anything yet so this will get stitched onto the paper um, if I want it to even hmm, be a little more I'm not real pleased with I'm going to just actually, whoop, well, that happened. I guess it's a day for lemons with me, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is just ink that, and maybe put it down here. Where'd that other bit go? Yeah. 
a hazardous takeoff. See how I can just put it there. And again, it won't matter. If I'm worried about it, um, I can put a little, you know, moving on here, I can put a little bit of the matte medium on it. And that'll secure it a little better. With this one, I want to get it right under that T there. That's the place I might use. Okay. Some matte medium. And I'm just going to very gently, because I don't want to move it, just kind of move it in there and pretend I had planned it that way the whole time. That's what a lot of a lot of things are, is mistakes and pretending it was part of the plan. Um, I could right along here kind of, I'm going to just tuck a little bit of glue in to give it some stick. And again, that distressing just sort of magically, um, you know, makes the torn page not so much like, oh, it's a torn page, it needs to go in the trash. Makes it a little more interesting if you're going for the grunge look. Probably not if you wanted it to look picture perfect, but... There you have it. Um, I could, you know, with this kind of thing, you can go on and on just playing and doing more and more to grunge it up. I could also bring in, I do have a lot of, of color with this. Um, I could bring in something like this. I don't know that I'm going to, I kind of think, this may be as far as I go with this one, but you know, again, even just adding that additional layer, just again, um, you know, just adds, adds a little bit more. Maybe I will go with that. Doesn't hurt. And I try to have all these things right within my reach if possible so that, uh, I don't need to think a lot about, actually, yeah, I'll go ahead and put it right like on that. I don't have to think too much about, oh, I need to get something out in order to do that. If it's right by me, I can just grab it and go for it. In here, try to get that on there. And that part will get stitched, so even... Uh, even if the hold isn't great right now, it will be once. See how that got on there? I'm not going to worry about the back because this is going to be something I probably glue down on a page or, you know, something. If I wanted this to go in a pocket in a journal, I could put some nice paper on the back. You know, make it more into a tag um, and that that would work too, but for the moment at least, I'm gonna probably just leave it at this stage. And I'm just kind of pulling out the, it wants to curl a little, so I'm pulling it out. And if I, if you get those little, I don't know if you can see that, it's very light, the little, the little bits of uh, thread coming off, it'll fringe more and, and some, you know, if you can get it to fringe a little and it's sort of splayed out, that can look real cute too. So be a little bit tough with it. A little tough love with your art. And sometimes that actually goes a long way. So 
I think I'll end it there. And hopefully, as you saw, even with this one, with my hazardous uh, rip job on that little phrase there, um, not every mistake is um, impossible to overcome. When possible, work with it because you just may like um, the results when you have to work through that mistake. So I hope you learned something with this or got some ideas and I'll come back to you with another video soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.